Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Keanu Esports stream. My name is Shadi Hanna, Coach Zeddy, head coach of the Esports program here at Keanu. And we are just about to get started with today's game, Keanu Huskies versus St. Edwards University. And I realize that I am very under my prep, and I haven't actually looked into what their mascot is. It's a goat, uh, ram. Let's do some Google in here. Let's get ourselves caught up as quickly as we can. But St. Edwards University, a team that we've come across a number of times in collegiate esports, in Rocket League, in Call of Duty last year as well. They're a very strong team in COD. A CCL top contender. It's going to be a ton of fun going up against them today. They're the Hilltoppers. Not something I would have guessed. It's not very intuitive for me. But it makes sense, I guess. Goats, rams, they like to climb on hills, I think. Is that what goats and rams do? It's goat-ram behavior? I don't, I don't know. Anyways, we're about to get started with our game in just a moment. And actually, the players are already in lobby on hotel to start things off. We are going to start on hotel for the first hard point. Keanu had a tremendous showing in their season opener last year against Blinn College 3-0 in their very first match of the season. Hoping for a repeat performance here tonight against the St. Edwards University, but you never know. This is a very good team. You know, it's going to be exciting to see what happens and how things play out. And the Huskies already fighting for that first point. Exelios is going to find first blood. Kurz finds a second. Bala will get the refrag. And actually finds himself three in a row. Bala! We'll finally get traded out by Exelios, but a great defensive effort from him to prevent the Huskies' offensive. And now Keanu, kind of forced onto the back end here as Dalla just winning out on those gunfights. Now for those of you that are new to competitive Call of Duty, there are a couple things to note. First off, the map modes will change frequently throughout the course of the evening. So we're going to start off on this is hard point here where basically teams have to compete to control those marked zones on the map. And the more, the longer time you spend on those marked zones, the more points you generate for your team. The first team to 250 points will win. And we'll see a couple different map types over the, cross, the course of the evening. In addition to the changing map types, we're also going to have changing hosts. Now, one of the benefits, like the, I almost said benefits, one of the more interesting elements of collegiate esports is that because you are playing online, you have some one team that hosts a lobby and one team that joins it depending on the game. Sometimes you'll have a host, other times you'll you'll have a shared server, but COD likes to have host servers. And what that means is, is that over the course of the series, not only will we be changing maps and map types, but also series hosts. So this map is our host, which means that technically speaking, we're supposed to have a ping advantage. Okay? So just some important things to note, some little trivia for those of you that are new to collegiate Call of Duty. As we're getting set up here on this stream and on this game, we can take a quick little look at the current state of the map. And if you do pay attention to the top there at the scoreboard, you can see St. Edwards coming off to a pretty strong start. The Huskies, you know, we're not just... Oh, speaking of host, we're going to figure out what's up with that. I'm just waiting for word from my Call of Duty coach to see what exactly is happening. So stay tuned for more info. Sometimes that happens in games. Technical issues. Hopefully we'll be able to get reconnected to the game soon. I'm not sure if it affected all of the players yet or not. So we're going to cut to a quick break while we sort out what just happened. We'll be right back with some more Collegiate Call of Duty after the break.
Hello once again and a quick update for the stream. Unfortunately, it appears as though the stream was disconnected but the players were not and because of league regulations we aren't actually allowed to pause the game to get back in to the match. We're going to have to wait until the map resolves until we can resume watching the match. I apologize for the inconvenience for those of you that tuned in to watch some Call of Duty. In the interim, while you're waiting, we are streaming our Season Valorant game on the Keanu Esports 2 channel. So if you are interested in checking that out while you wait for this map to come back, you can always hop over to the other stream and take a look at how our Valorant team is doing against Kansas City Blue. We will be back on this stream with more Call of Duty after the first map resolves. Thank you so much for tuning into the stream and we'll see you in a bit.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Kano Esports stream. My name is Shaddy Zeddy Hanna. We're back with some more collegiate Call of Duty. Now on the search and destroy, Kiano did in fact lose the first map against St. Edwards University on the hard point on Hotel while we were in our technical pause. But we're now back, a 0-1 deficit, no matter for the Huskies. They're ready and prepared for the challenge. SND is where they shine. We're going to see them get started right here, right now, here on Embassy as the Huskies taking that defensive. Already positioning a lot of attention to that middle area controlling that mid zone we can see a potential little skirmish comes out as thresh guns down shoku on the side the bomb has been planted now onto the a site Mikiano is going to do everything they can to try to defend this site already going two man down though the strong start for st edwards as curtis takes some fire exelios finds one vanity will actually nade off eons and that puts the huskies in a 2v2 they know where vanity was positioned but they only have 10 seconds to get to the bomb and with only one man standing it's going to be difficult to make that attempt saint edwards will find the round win and here's thresh with that final kill on to Exelio. It's a well-fought round from St. Edwards University. They did a good job of kind of controlling the pace and baiting out Shoku on that right side, finding that initial pick to open up the map just a wee bit. And now the Huskies on the offensive. We'll see if they can switch things up a little bit. For those of you that are new to Search and Destroy, the rules are simple. One team plants a bomb on a site and the other team attempts to defend them. Once the bomb gets planted, essentially your attackers and defenders switch. And now the attacking team defends the site from their opponents and tries to make sure that that bomb detonates before time runs out. Three-man lead now for St. Edwards University as they do a very good job of controlling the rotations. And now Shoku in an awkward position. Is able to find one. But has to fend off two. And the defuse has already begun. And as both Vanity and Thresh stack up on top of each other, they will be able to get the defuse in time. SEU, very strong team, you know, going over last year's CCL rankings. Actually going to pull those up here. But they were ranked in the top eight college COD teams last year. This is a very strong team that we're going up against. And it's nice to be able to challenge ourselves against some tougher opponents because it gives us the opportunity to really learn, you know, from these high-performing programs. Their speed, their ability to get onto site quickly, to be decisive. You can see already that speed in that rotation. This Kurz will get taken out rather quickly in a 1v3 situation. Brody will find one. And he's just watching that staircase, trying to see if anybody tries to clear out site before that bomb gets planted. He's going to force himself onto site. He's going to get found, spotted out by Bala. Kurz is going to find him as well, but Bala's gun he is too clean. St. Edwards University will push to a 3 0 lead. Keanu just doing whatever they can really to try to get onto these sites. It's just some of these early picks and kills are just coming out very fast. Coming out very, very quickly and are just slowing the pace of things down. For the Huskies and, you know, trying to find themselves onto the site and get themselves established. And they are able to do so here as all four Huskies members are currently alive and currently contesting the site. Exelios will actually find that opening pick now. And again, Exelios in the room of Vanity. He will find a second one. Bala will trade him though. 
And I think Kerr spotted Bala there as Bala finds the second one onto Shoku. And Bala is having a pretty solid game right now. He's finding important picks when he needs to. In a 1v2 now for St. Edward's University. Kerr is going to try to take him down. And both Kerr's and Brody will hold him in position. And that will mean the round going the way of Keanu as Bala will not be able to completely eliminate the Huskies in time. The bomb will detonate and Huskies will finally get themselves on the board here. Keanu Huskies win their first round of the SNT. And a nice first win for the Huskies too, you know, just being able to keep all those me members alive, letting Zelios get that first pick and build that man advantage and play off of that. You know, I think our, the prior rounds, they were just getting taken out and picked off way too quickly. And being able to just hold their ground a little bit longer, regroup, reposition and play those trade angles. Really shaping the outcome of these rounds. One for one as Kurz gets traded up by Vala again. Vanity will find Shoku off of that nade. Vanity does get spotted out by Exelios, but I think they saw each other, so that's important info going both ways for both teams. Brody on the back end now, but Vanity holding him in such a great spot. Exelios shoots a little, a little bouncy ball grenade there. Finds one with a headshot onto Vanity. Finds a second onto it, Eons, and the third one onto Bala now. Oh, but he's not looking the right way, and Bala with the full wraparound will get the shot in the back of Exelios. 4-1 to now for St. Edward's University. And a great effort from Exelios. Really, really strong effort from him. But unfortunately, it just wasn't enough. St. Edwards just confirmed number six in the College COD Land Finals last year. That is the sixth best team in collegiate Call of Duty. Keanu, quite a bit to go up against here in our game tonight. We were able to take the one round off on the SND, and from what I gathered, the hard point I think was about 250 to 80, roughly. Definitely at a bit of a disadvantage here. And this is now, of course, the St. Edwards University host as well. It's playing on a bit of a ping diff, but we're not going to credit the, the loss to that. St. Edwards is just playing a very strong and very convincing game of COD right now. Now on to match points. St. Edwards leads 5-1. to one. First to six rounds wins in the best of 11 SND. We'll see if the Huskies can pull off the miracle. Starts with just one round win. We'll see if they can get that now. The Huskies back on the defensive. They are going to match this aggressive D-side push from SEU. Joku on the sniper holding off that long rotation angle. Brody dropping straight down onto site. He's going to take a ton of fire here, but he's going to be able to get himself out of dodge stat. Goku holding the sniper. Decides to rotate off the point. They know where Vanity is. Their crosshairs are in a good spot. They know where he is, and Exelios will actually be able to land some bullets on him. The bomb has not yet been planted. I don't know if Keanu knows that the bomb holder is currently leaning A side. But Brody will attempt to close the distance on Vanity here. He's holding those windows, but not the right one. Shoku takes a shot, goes just wide. But Exelios will actually find the kill onto Vanity, and they now know where Thresh is as those bullets go a little wide. He has to plant now. But he's actually going to make the Miracle Wrap over to B to try to plant back on B, but I think... The Huskies are aware of this as Exelios starts rotating. Brody is already there. He's just not looking at the site. He needs to set his attention to the point. He caught him, but it was just too late. But Brody will be able to clean that up. Brody and Exelios, the double fire there. And Huskies take their second round of the game. And a great team effort from the Huskies there. Good teamwork, good team play. 
to land and secure that kill. Still on match point though, the pressure is not off, but the round quality is looking a little bit stronger. We'll see as Keanu now back on offense. Where are they going to take this bomb? Are they going to go push for the A site or the B site? A lot of teams seem to like planting on B. And it looks like that's what the Huskies are going to lean towards as well, is this initial B push. But they are starting to lead that bomb over to A. They are looking to do a bit of a mix-up, so they're putting a lot of noise and a lot of pressure on, on the B site. But they're going to start rotating in numbers. Vanity with a sniper shot onto Brody. That's going to take him out early on in the round. And really put a dent in the Huskies' plans as Shoku tries to set himself up, but just can't quite get the shot off. Exelios now in a 1v3. Finds Bala, but Bala finds him first. And that is going to be SEU taking map number two in a very convincing 6-2 victory. Great effort from the Huskies. We saw a couple strong rounds out of them, but this definitely we knew this was a hard match going into this one. Playing into a team as decorated as St. Edwards University COD is. And that's the beauty of competitive COD is that you do have five maps altogether. It is a best of five. And that means that the Huskies still have a chance to keep the dream alive as they enter map three. Going back to the control, back to hotel. So even though we didn't get to see the full hard point on hotel, we will get to see Huskies playing hotel on their next map. We're going to cut to a very short break as we wait for the Huskies to get set up in their lobby for their next game. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Collegiate Call of Duty in just a moment.
We are back with some more college cod here in the Nay Star League. Week number two versus St. Edwards University. My name is Shadi Hanna, head coach of the Cano Esports program. And we're about to get started with our third map here back on Hotel. This time playing the control map variant. Now control. Oh, did I speak too soon? I think I spoke too soon. It looks like there was an issue with the lobby setup. I love when COD baits me like that. There was a quick issue with the lobby setup, but we will be playing Control and we will be playing on the Breenberg Hotel map. Now, while we're waiting for the match to get started, quickly go over the rules of Control and how this works. You have both teams attempting to fight over a designated space, two designated spaces on each map. The defending team's role is obviously to keep their opponents out of the zone, the attacking team, to push their defenders off of the zone and gain control of the space by standing within that space for a certain period of time. Now, both teams, in addition to the time constraint, also have a total life pool. So control is a respawn mode, meaning when you die, you will respawn, but only up to a certain number of times. That's what differentiates it from hardpoint is once you run out of total lives to respawn, you cannot respawn anymore. That means that if you die and you have zero lives left, you are gone. So there is an incentive for both teams not only to be quick and decisive in their attacks, but also to be efficient with their use of their respawns. Because if you trade out too many times, you might not have enough respawns to close out the objective and finish off the job. And teams take turns between attacking and defending the control sites. It is a best of three map type within the best of five series so you could see five rounds of control and go the full the full five into a full five set it is the, probably the longest game mode in cod depending on you know how 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 difficult the defending team makes it for the attackers on that initial setup but it's always a ton of fun to watch and the players are just now getting set up in the lobby ready to go here for game number three this is a zero to two map lead. Um, I guess, well, that's a, that's a confusing statement. Let me try that again. Zero to two map score in favor of St. Edwards University. St. Edwards University currently holding the series up by two maps. One more for them to take the series, but the Huskies still have a chance at the reverse sweep with three maps remaining left to play. They showed some signs of life on that SND. You know, it's a very tough team that we're going up against. And, you know, SEU really put on a strong showing on the SND. But there were a couple rounds where the Huskies were able to get the best of them. And even on the rounds they lost, some of them were, they kept it pretty tight. They definitely didn't go down without a fight. So as we jump into the control variant here, we will see how the Huskies adjust and adapt to their opponents for this third map of Call of Duty. And while we're loading into the match, let's quickly introduce our players on the side of Keanu. Kurz, returning SMG player, the running gun. In the number six slot, Brody, the team IGL, the experienced captain of the team. In the seventh slot, Exelios, the Huskies' oldest veteran player, returning now for his third year in the program. And in the number eight slot, Shoku, the rookie straight out of Edmonton, Alberta. Alberta. <laughs> Edmonton, Alberta. Coming in from Edmonton, Alberta to play for the Keanu Huskies this year in his first ever debut season of College Cod. Huskies are starting on defense and they've decided that, you know, while they are going to take, make some efforts to try to contest this B site, SEU does have a pretty firm grasp on the site. It is going to be a little difficult to reclaim this. So they're going to try not to burn through too much of their life pool. And they might decide to start falling off towards that A site, but actually choosing to invest quite a few numbers onto B and SEU should be able to use that time to fully claim. The Huskies have to be aware that there is going to be somebody guarding this rotation. Over to over to A. That is going to be Eons in base. Shoku will be able to take him out. And actually, the Huskies have been able to stop SEU from fully capturing this B side. That was not expected at all. They got it two and a half ticks there, but the Huskies will be able to start defending that a little bit. As SEU has already committed some very serious numbers over to this A side, but look at Eons, man. He is just gaming right now. Thresh. With the bunny hop and skip and a jump in that gunfight. That's going to give him the advantage there. He is going to get taken out by Brody though. And the Huskies have fully claimed defense of the B side. But on the A side there, Bala just happy sitting on that point. Racking up some score there. Thresh 
trying to do the same as well. Shoku now trying to rotate, but Bala already in position. Great awareness from him, and Vanity is going to shut that down as well. SEU jumping between the points. You don't really see this in control. Usually teams want to fully capture one before they move on to the next one, but they're just going from A to B and back. They don't care, and they are going to be able to finish up the A side here now as the Huskies, currently down nine respawns, are going to have to make the miracle defense on B with only one tick remaining. And one thing I have to say about SEU's gameplay is I really love the way that they start pre-rotating to anticipate Huskies' rotations. And they put a player right in the perfect spot, like knowing, okay, what's the next move they're going to make? Well, we're going to send our guy there and cut that off. Like that's just exceptional awareness and really speaks to, you know, the caliber strength and, and, and knowledge that this team has and that they play with, the experience that they play with, you know. You know gun, gunny is one thing and being able to win out on your gunfights is one element of COD, but knowing where to be and when and being in the right place at the right time all the time, that's just, that's just class, that's experience. Great shots from Brody as he finds one. He tries to get the transfer onto Ballast, but Huskies with no respawns remaining. It's an impossible feat. St. Edwards University will capture the first round of control. First to three rounds win. The Huskies now are going to try to repeat the performance that they just saw, now moving over to the attacking side. <coughs> Excuse me. Starting to get a little chilly up here in Fort McMurray. That's why I like spending my time in the arena and just seeing all the fire plays that the Huskies put together and whip up over the course of the season. And right now looking for some more fire plays as the Huskies try to get themselves established on this A site, but Bala doing a good job of ducking and weaving his way through that gunfight, but Shoku Excellently well played there onto Thrash. He is going to be able to get himself onto the site, but choosing not to touch. And that's a good way to bait out some of those nades. Vanity, bait, getting that grenade baited out. He's not going to have that resource available for him now on this respawn. And that should buy them some time to touch as Kurz will start to make contact with that point. Great positioning from Brody. Catches his opponent completely unaware. He is going to switch over to the, uh, I believe, to the AR. No, nope, I'm going crazy. He is still holding onto that SMG. But looks like he made some quick upgrades mid-fight there. And Vanity going to pop up to the side. Brody tries to flick that cross here, but doesn't quite line it up. And it's going to be Vanity winning out on that gunfight. And the Husky is only able to get one tick on the A site. 50 seconds remaining. So they're going to have to start doing some serious damage here before that time runs out. And Kerr is going for the wraparound rotation. He's able to shoot down. Thresh on site. Finds the pickup onto Eons as well. Breaks out the trophy. Will be able to get himself set up on point. That's a great play from Kurz to get the Huskies captured on A site here. And they will be able to take that site down. A, hunt, a minute and 40 seconds remaining now. And t 17 lives to use for this B site. This is definitely within reach for the Huskies. Gonna have to make a good effort here as Shoku gets traded up by Vanity. Vanity finds two onto Brody Eons. Taking down Exelios as well on the backside. Kurz here. Catches up that rotation from Vanity. Finally shutting him down. No streak for him. Kerr's on a four streak of his own. Almost on five, but does get taken out before he can get that first ordinance there. And Brody taken out by Thresh. They can't find the refrag onto him. One minute and 11 lives remaining for the Huskies. Bala taking down Kerr's on the entry point there. But he will get refragged by Exelios. But Vanity finds two again. He is just on fire right now. For SEU. And look at that cheeky little angle. Just sitting on the hood of the truck. He's going to get naded out by Brody. But Vanity will actually find a nade onto Brody of his own. And the Huskies now with only 5 lives remaining. This is looking a lot more challenging than it did 10 seconds ago. Huskies now have to make a desperate effort on site. Kurz will find that entry frag. 18 seconds left. Going to have to touch soon. There's someone behind Exelios. I think that's Eons. Yeah, Eons currently sitting behind Exelios. Brody will find a kill onto Vanity. But he's going to have to dive his way onto point. But they're just holding that window. It's just impossible. SEU takes the second round of the control. 
And you can really see the pressure that the control variant builds for Call of Duty. I mean, not only do you have to deal with contesting a site from your opponents with a time limit, but you also have a life limit as well. And you start to get a little bit cautious, you know, as that life total burns down. It becomes a little bit more challenging to feel confident in your decisions. You want to play a little bit more risk averse. And I think that that like, psycho psychological impact of the game mode really does shape how teams approach the challenge of control. Very fascinating game mode for sure. Eons will take down Kurs. Choku finding one on Zabala. Husky's now just trying to get a read on their opponents, figure out where these attacks are coming from. Eons gets a nice headshot onto Kurs. Brody will fully wrap behind, and I believe with the silent footsteps there, he will be able to make it undetected. Eons was ready for it, but wasn't able to anticipate the timing. Kurs finds one, and the Husky's able to fully clear off this B side. But they're going to have to start thinking about making their way back to A as SEU does touch the point there. Brody, nice shots from him. He's going to find one. And start to apply some pressure from SEU. But they are going to be able to start pushing this down closer to that first tick. We'll see if the Huskies can collapse before that first tick sticks. And as of right now, they are doing a great job of pointing off SEU. But unfortunately, not able to fully push them off the point, And that will be the first tick progressing at A. Huskies now... Kind of caught between a rock and a hard place. Not sure whether to commit to this A defense or start pre-rotating over to B. SEU did a great job of conditioning them in that last attack. By touching both points at once. But now they are going to play a pretty committed A site. And the Huskies are saying, you know what? Take it. We'll just play all our lives on B. A respectable choice for sure. Xelios finds one, gets traded. Now Kurz just waiting for that timing onto Thresh. He's just happy chilling. And he is going to take that peek. A great timing from him. Finds a kill. Eons get taken down from the window as well. That's a great rotation from Shoku. Putting himself in that perfect position. And this is one of the advantages of playing the one site game on control. You know, you do give your opponents a significant time jump. When you let them capture that first point, they do get some additional time for that. But now you have a bunch of lives remaining, and you know exactly where your opponent wants to play. So it is a very respectable choice to make. You know, there's pros and cons, risks and reward. But it does seem to be paying off for the Huskies here as, you know, they're keeping the life count a lot closer. And so far, they've done a pretty decent job of keeping SEU off the point. But now, Thresh... Able to get some serious damage onto the point. The Huskies are going to have to start thinking about this recapture here. Exelio is finding shots onto Eons. Brody will take him down from above. Vanity will get the refrag, though. Kurz has to pop off, finds two. And that was the pop off that the Huskies needed. But is it enough for him to touch the point? There's only like a second remaining. He has to touch, or it's going to be the whole map. Kurz will jump his way onto the point, but Bala will take him down. St. Edwards with the 3 0 on control will secure the map and therefore the match for the Huskies or for the Hilltoppers, I should say. The Huskies put up a great effort in tonight's match, but SEU, a strong team, no doubt. Going to give them plenty of content and plenty of material to review going into the rest of the season. It's good to get these games out of the way early because it gives you lots to learn and focus on as you go out through the rest of this season. St. Edwards put on a dominant performance tonight. And the Huskies go back to the lab, see what they can learn from this, and prepare for the rematch in the winter semester in CXP and CCL. And, you know, hopefully even later this season in the NACE playoffs as well. Huskies did previously qualify for playoffs in both semesters last season. We're a strong team, a, contend a playoff contending team. Just a little bit of work to get up to that next level. And games like this is what's going to help that happen. Again, my name, Shadi Hanna, head coach of the eSports program. It's been a pleasure to bring you this broadcast for tonight. And we thank you to everybody that stuck around despite all the technical issues at the beginning. We appreciate your continued support of our program. And we look forward to seeing you on the next Call of Duty stream next Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Thank you all for tuning into the stream tonight. Have a great night.